Hello and welcome to Football Daily, where today we're highlighting 10 players whose expiring contracts shouldn't be renewed, including some names which might surprise you. 10. James Milner An underreported aspect of Liverpool's quest for a quadruple this season has been that they've done it while remaking the squad. Ibrahim Okonate and Kostas Tsimikas have chipped in significant minutes, Harvey Elliott has been earmarked for a starting berth, and Luis Diaz joined mid-season, with Firmino now a rotation man. And with Milner, the Ox and Keita out of contract in the next 15 months, the midfield is primed for a targeted overhaul. Milner is one of just five outfielders over 35 in the Premier League this season, and to be honest, it started to show. He's started just seven games and only one since Christmas, while of his seven appearances in the Champions League, four saw him pick up under 10 minutes on the field. And though he's working extra hard for the team, making more tackles and interceptions than ever before, he simply can't maintain his previous pace, committing more fouls, contesting fewer duels and giving the ball away more often. Whether he signs off with another title, Champions League, both or neither, Milner remains one of the best free signings of the modern era. He should leave this summer on a high. 9. Axel Witzel with Haaland leaving and 17 of their remaining 32 senior squad members out of contract by 2023, Borussia Dortmund are entering a time of serious upheaval. And kicking that off is Axel Witzel, whose deal expires this year after a four-season spell and who, at 32, is due an exit from the Westfalenstadion. The Belgian has been a useful servant to BVB but has played fewer minutes in the last two seasons than he did in his first campaign in Germany losing ground to the sprightlier legs of Mahmoud Dahoud and Jude Bellingham. And when he is selected, Witzel isn't the player he once was. With 3.5 passes into the final third a game, he's only half as good as he was in 2018-19, while he also carries the ball forward less and can't work as hard, ranking in the bottom 2% of midfielders for pressures and bang average for tackles and interceptions. With this slide in performance, it's no wonder Dortmund are linked with a move for Xaver Schlager of Wolfsburg, eight years Witzel's junior. It's time to back Rosa's vision for the club, and Witzel, unfortunately, should be the first casualty. 8. Luke Shaw The scale of the job facing Eric Ten Hag at Man United means Luke Shaw's contract is unlikely to feature high on his list of priorities, but the Dutchman should consider letting the Englishman run down his deal in 2023 if he wants to craft a more flexible and resilient Red Devils squad. Shaw has been decent for United, making 200 appearances over eight years, and is still just 26. But he's a waste of the club's resources, raking in 150k a week and only once playing 30 league games in a season. That means that United invest a quarter of a million pounds a week in two left-backs who don't improve the team, and while money is not a huge issue for them, they can't waste it indefinitely, with Liverpool now matching their 550 million euro yearly income. Besides, Shaw's strong creative numbers can't offset his poor defending sitting in the bottom 20% of fullbacks for both tackles and interceptions, and that unbalances the whole left side, putting more pressure on the already overtaxed Harry Maguire. After a decade of misery, United need a new start, a new style, and a new squad. Shaw may not be the biggest problem, but it's time the club stopped settling for second best. 7. Manuel Lanzini One of the greatest compliments we can give David Moyes' West Ham side is this, they may have evolved beyond Manuel Lanzini. As recently as 2016-17, the Argentinian was the Irons player of the season, but has averaged just 1,200 minutes a year since thanks to knee and ankle injuries, and now, at 28, is just 12 months away from leaving as a free agent. 11 West Ham players have picked up more game time than Lanzini this term, and while he's been useful, with 7 goal contributions in 15 starts, that's only 5th in the squad, with positional rivals Fornals and Ben Rama both ahead of him. It's also an overperformance of his 0.2 xG a game, the same as Suchek, and he's dipped below one dribble a match for the first time in England, roughly a third of his output four years ago. When Lanzini plays, the team takes just 1.4 points per game, the worst of any West Ham regular and he hasn't added a single goal or assist to their brilliant Europa League run either. For 70k a week, it's just not good enough. 6. Wilfried Zaha Crystal Palace's rebuild has been a thing of beauty this year, turning over the squad while producing their best football in recent memory, and it'd be tempting to try and keep a good thing going, offering Wilf Zaha an extension on a contract expiring in 2023. After all, the Ivorian has 11 in league play, just his third time hitting double figures but second year running, and remains a talisman for the team, rising to fourth on their all-time appearance list and approaching two decades with the Eagles. 
However, Zaha is 30 in November and due for decline, having played 86% of available Premier League games over the last 8 years. That's almost the same as Hugo Lloris on 89% and given the physical demands of the wide man's game, he's unlikely to maintain the same level going forward, while the team is starting to evolve beyond him, with three players getting more shots, Michael Olise creating more chances and even Zaha's dribbling less important than before, with five of his teammates managing over 1.4 take-ons a match. On top of this, Zaha's £130,000 a week contract is the most at the club, twice the squad average, meaning a sale could free up cash for the next stage of Vieira's revamp. With Olise in the wings, it's time to move on. 5. Marco Asensio Real Madrid looks set to splurge on wages this summer, with Antonio Rudiger and Kylian Mbappe both likely to arrive at the Bernabeu, and to offset that expense, they may need to trim the bill elsewhere. One such spot could be with Marco Asensio, whose deal expires in 2023. With nine league goals, this is already his best scoring season ever, but the Spaniard is 26 and has never played 2,000 minutes in a campaign for Real Madrid. In fact, over a quarter of his La Liga game time came in one year with Espanyol, and his 12 goal involvements that season still ranks as a career best. But he also seems to have lost his identity. In 2017-18, he was a stellar link between midfield and the front line, with 2.5 key passes per game and 5 passes into the final third, numbers placing him in the top 5% of attackers. But now, he profiles as an ordinary wide forward, with 3 shots per 90 coming at the cost of the worst creative numbers of his career and all-time low dribbles and pressures. Not good enough to rival Mbappe or Vinicius for a starting spot, Asensio could yet be great elsewhere, but with a market value of £36 million, down from a previous high of £81 million, Real should get a fee for him while they can. 4. Riyad Mahrez With 23 goals in all competitions, Riyad Mahrez is having the most prolific campaign of his career and has averaged a strike or assist every 93 minutes across the league and Champions League, putting City in sight of a third title in his four years at the club and another UCL final. So why should Guardiola let the Algerian leave? rather than offering an extension on his deal ending in 2023. Well, as good as Mahrez has been, he's still not a guaranteed starter, playing just 45% of league minutes at the time of writing, and City take just as many points per game with him off the field as they do with him on it. He'll also be 32 by the time his contract is up, and with Foden in need of more minutes, plus Alvarez and potentially Haaland arriving, City would be better off investing in them, or keeping hold of Gabriel Jesus, whose deal also has just one year to go. Less positionally versatile than most of his teammates too, Maris could still fetch a good fee and offset what is due to be a costly summer at the Etihad. A lucrative wind down in Italy should suit everyone. 3. Gonzalo Guedes It's been a dull season for Valencia under José Bordalas and looks set to end around 10th, possibly a relief to Los Che fans after years of mismanagement and turmoil. But Gonzalo Guedes has been a bright spot, putting up 11 goals and 6 assists in La Liga at the time of writing an increase on his 5-5 five and five last season and an apparent return to form after two poor years before that, prompting links to Wolves ahead of the summer. If Valencia are smart, and they usually aren't, they'll sell. Guedes' 0.45 xG per 90 is perfectly respectable but suggests he should have 12 goal involvements instead of 17, and while that's decent for mid-table, it doesn't justify Guedes' club-high wage of 100k a week. His overperformance also means Valencia can charge a premium on a player due to leave in 2023 clawing some money back on the record £36 million the Portuguese cost them back in 2018, and giving them funds to improve a squad which is now just the seventh most valuable in Spain. The last remnant of the star's first structure-later transfer policy which took Valencia down the league, Guedes' departure would leave the club free to forget the mistakes of the past and enter a new era. 2. Alexandro One of the characteristics of Max Allegri's best Juventus teams was their use of fullbacks. Thanks to a rock-solid centre-back unit, the wide men were free to fly down the wings and create in the final third. But while Juan Cuadrado is still killing it at 33, with seven goal involvements in Serie A this term, 31-year-old Alexandro is struggling on the opposite side, grabbing a single assist and rotating with youngster Luca Pellegrini. Sandro was once a phenomenal outlet, receiving four progressive passes a game and completing 1.5 dribbles, among Europe's best tallies, but now he picks up only two forward balls and has managed a paltry eight take-ons all season. Chance creation and passes into the final third are both down too, and while he's never been much of a defender, his output this year is truly shocking, 
with just 24% of the tackles he attempts seeing him walk away with the ball, compared to around 50% in the past. 14 Serie A teams now skew younger than the Bianconeri, making a squad turnover increasingly necessary, and Sandro's 2023 contract end makes him an easy man to cut. Time for the nostalgia to end in Turin. 1. N'Golo Conte No one knows what Chelsea will look like next season, with the club yet to change ownership and Christensen and Rudiger leaving for free. But the year after could see even more upheaval, with another eight stars out of contract, among them N'Golo Conte, who at 31 seems to have finally exited his prime. After over 20 pressures and five defensive actions a game for six straight seasons at Stamford Bridge, that's probably no surprise. The Frenchman winning possession for his team every 17 minutes since the £32 million switch from Leicester. But he's only started an average of 20 league games over the last three campaigns, compared to 35 in the three before that. And he's less influential, with fewer touches in the centre of the park, while getting dispossessed more often and mopping up fewer loose balls. More notably, he trails Mateo Kovacic in every passing and dribbling metric, as well as in pressures and tackle success rate. Put simply, he's no longer the best Chelsea midfielder. We wouldn't be surprised to see Conte in another elite side should he leave the Blues, but it'll be a different Conte, requiring more protection and rotation. Either way, it's the end of an era for Chelsea, France and Conte himself, and one worthy of a place among the all-time greats. So those are 10 players we think should not be given new contracts, but who else would you have included? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll never miss an upload. We'll see you next time.